Hello and welcome to this quick introduction to Opera Simulation Software for the design of shielding for a known MRI magnet, and also at the solution to developing a model of the magnet when only fringe field maps are available. Opera has been in commercial development since 1984. In 2018, Opera joined Asso Systems as part of the Simulia brand. The basic groundwork of what has become known as MRI was laid in the 1950s, but it wasn't until the 1970s that the first research machines were designed. A critical factor in the design of an MRI device is the base DC field. The higher the field, the better the spatial and contrast resolution that can be achieved, and the associated high frequencies can mean faster scan times. But whatever the strength of the base field, it must be homogeneous to a few ppm over typically a 30 centimeter diameter sphere to give an artifact free picture. The picture shown in this slide represents a simplified version of the topology of a closed form MRI magnet. The red coils are all superconducting solenoids. The aim of the MRI base magnet designer is to produce a homogeneous field in the central volume. This is achieved primarily with the central superconducting coils, but the base DC magnet produces high levels of straight field. To combat this, coaxial active shielding coils are added further from the center of the magnet. These oppose the main axial flux. However, they cannot completely cancel the stray field. As you can see in the contour plot, at a distance of over 2 meters from the magnet, we're still seeing around 7.5 gauss. There's a legal limit for stray field, and therefore the surrounding area needs shielding from the magnet, so we'll take a look at this now. The global accepted legislation on humans subjected to a DC field states that the field must be below 5 gauss. This is so as not to pose a risk to medical devices such as pacemakers as outlined in early guidelines. So that is the first and main job of the shield to contain the flux below a level of five gauss in areas where humans may be present. The secondary function is to shield the magnet itself from exterior sources. We don't want power cables, transformers and the likes to cause artifacts on patient scans when they turn on at an inopportune time. So the magnet itself needs electromagnetic shielding in order to perform accurately and reliably. The shielding therefore can be considered to be two-way. And of course all of this must be performed at minimum cost and with minimum structural impact on the building itself. Today we're looking at finite element analysis in the design process and in particular our software opera. If we're looking at the design of the base DC magnet or the shielding for it then we need to use a magnetostatic solver with non-linear capabilities. In the case of Opera, this uses just one degree of freedom per node, which makes it as efficient as possible in the solution of the model in terms of both memory usage and solution speed. When defining the shield in a final element analysis system, you'd normally define a volume which represented the three-dimensional limits of the individual plates of shield material. This can lead to numerical difficulties due to large aspect ratio elements if you don't use facilities such as Opera's mosaic meshing to introduce heterohedral elements. Large aspect ratio tetrahedra can result in inaccurate answers or convergence problems. So in Opera we've additionally implemented the means to represent the shield material as purely a surface with a property giving the material and thickness. The user can make use of laminated materials as many shields nowadays are made of laminated steels or mu metals. This surface representation or thin plate boundary condition as we call it eliminates any issues around aspect ratios and numerical difficulties. Finally, MRI designers tend to look at certain criteria to judge a successful design. So in an FEA system, you'll need to be able to view ISO surfaces, fields on planes, and calculate associated Legendre polynomial coefficients. Take a look now at how all of these are achieved in Opera. In FEA, there are different ways of modeling coils, which is most accurate and efficient can vary with the type of problem being solved. Firstly, we can use analytic representations of fixed current density coils. These are placed independent of the mesh. The conductors don't form part of the mesh in the solution, hence models can be easier to define. Alternately, we can use a filamentary representation or we can choose to mesh the coil. For MRI based magnet or shielding calculation design where accuracy is paramount, we use an analytical coil representation. And the unique formulation of the Opera 3D magnetostatic solver overcomes the problems of cancellation errors associated with a general purpose solver. When modeling a structure such as a shield, where the thickness of the plate is small in comparison to its area, a volume representation is likely to exhibit one of several issues in the modeling process. As we mentioned before, it could be in the geometry, creating volumes that accurately reflect details such as corners is time consuming and prone to errors. In meshing, 
Elements are likely to be used inefficiently in areas and exhibit pure, poor aspect ratios in others. And third, the poor aspect ratio elements can cause numerical issues during the solution. So as an alternative, in OPERA you can make use of the so-called thin plate boundary condition to represent the shielding material as purely a surface during the modelling phase. Here we see a simplified model of a shielded room as defined using the surface representation of the shield. The shielding material, as in this case steel, is defined using just a surface. Note that although we enter the thickness of the steel as a single number, say 5mm normally, here we've entered a parameter, hash thick. This means it's easy to update the thickness of the steel during the design process or treat it as a variable in an optimization run, which we'll show later. We could also use multiple parameters, say for each individual wall, the floor and the ceiling. This also highlights another advantage of using the thin plate boundary condition. You can use the same mesh for all plate thicknesses using the design study. When it comes to defining the model in OPERA, you have a number of choices. You can define geometry using our own modeler. Primitives are created, then operations can be carried out to intersect, combine and trim, etc. Once the geometry of the rooms defined, properties are added for the various materials, the magnet defined, then the whole problem is enveloped in air for solution. Or rather than defining the room geometry in OPERA's modeler, you can read a model of the room from a CAD file. This again shows the ease of use of the thin plate boundary condition in that the user need only select the walls that are shielded. There's no requirement to then create them as thin meshable volumes by sweeping walls. This process of reading a step file and selecting the walls with the shielding is shown in the video that's playing. Finally, all of this can be scripted to automate the process. We have a sample script which defines the room, runs the analysis and produces the relevant output. Contact us if you'd like a copy for your own Opera installation. Moving on to post-processing now, here we see two functions commonly utilised by MRI shielding designers. On the left we see an ISO surface displayed at the level of 5 Gauss. It's immediately apparent that the shielding is insufficient to contain the field according to the mandated requirement. We can see what looks like an orthogonal axis by plotting field contours on the principal axis for a range of 0 to 5 Gauss. The transparent area in the centre of the model is all above the 5 Gauss limit. A technique employed by designers of MRI magnets for assessing field homogeneity is to calculate associated Legendre polynomials on a spherical surface. That harmonic series is a solution to Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation is valid in a source-free volume and there are no sources within the central scanning volume. So from this equation and the Legendre polynomials we can assess the field anywhere in the central volume. Looking at these coefficients is a simple way to compare the homogeneity of different magnet designs and the relative success of design modifications. Smaller higher order harmonic coefficients mean a more homogeneous field. Opera 3D provides designers with a direct way to calculate these Legendre polynomials and list them for any model. The issue that we're considering when looking at MRI shielding is a class of mathematical problems that's suitable for an automated optimization technique. Since Opera contains an integrated optimizer module, we'll look at these here to consider how to produce an optimal shield design rather than an efficient over-engineered example. Opera's optimizer can solve constrained or unconstrained problems. The variables to be used are specified during the definition of the model. We can specify variable di dimensions within the geometry. We can specify variable parameters such as the plate thickness. We can vary material properties or the problem excitation can be defined as a parameter. Here is the aforementioned simple example. We have a representative DC magnet and then we've added a steel plate. For a given set of parameters defining the plate, we display in the magnetic flux density in the plate. The exercise today is to optimize the dimensions of the plate to achieve certain objectives. The first objective is to minimize the amount of steel used in the design. The second objective is to minimize the total flux behind the shield. And the third objective is to minimize the perturbation of the field homogeneity in the central volume of the magnet. We might have two constraints for the type of problem. Firstly, we have our 5 Gauss constraint for the stray field. And for shimming purposes, we might specify a constraint of a change in the central field of the magnet of less than 15 Gauss. The parameters that we're giving the optimizer to work with are the dimensions of the plate, its length, height, and thickness. Within the optimizer, the user can specify limits for the input parameters. So here we're specifying that we want to vary the height, length, and thickness, and giving limits over which the optimizer can vary them. 
variables calculated using a typical post-processing script to pass back to the optimizer, and we select which to use as objectives. For this particular instance, we'll make use of the second and fourth harmonics and the volume of the shield. The constraints are specified as the maximum straight field should be less than or equal to 5 Gauss, and the change in the fundamental field should be less than or equal to 15 Gauss. Here we see the results of the optimization process. On the left is the objective function space. The vertical axis is the volume of the plate, and the horizontal plane maps out the second and fourth order harmonics. In that three-dimensional space, the blue crosses represent the Pareto optimal designs. Red signifies a feasible but not optimal design, and green are the infeasible designs, the ones that have failed one or both of the constraints. On the right, we plot the design variable space. The vertical axis represents the plate thickness, the horizontal axis, the length and height. You can see a cluster of Pareto optimal designs along a line representing a height of 250 to 300, since one goal is to minimize the volume of the plate. By clicking on any potential design in the optimization list, we can see the details of the parameters used. Here you can see the design variables of a particular instance with height, length, and thickness shown and the objectives are displayed, along with the constraints. Now we go on to the second part of the presentation, where we'll look at the sort of problem presented by the common problem of upgrading an old 1.5 Tesla magnet to a new 3 Tesla magnet. The installer of the 3 Tesla magnet has the support of the magnet manufacturer, so it goes through the sort of process we've just outlined in the first half of this presentation. But rather than being thrown away, the 1.5 Tesla magnet tends to get sold on to a second hospital. There's no magnet manufacturer involvement. So the only information that the installer has to work with is the stray field plot. The stray field plots give the magnitude of the field, but not the directions. So to calculate shielding requirements for this scenario, we need to first develop a model of the magnet. The advantage that the shield designer has in this scenario is that they're using the same tool as the base magnet designer. So some assumptions can be made and they're not usually concerned about the magnet homogeneity. If they're concerned about the mechanical forces generated by the magnet, this is available in the Opera Post processor. Here we see a typical stray field plot as supplied by a magnet manufacturer superimposed the section of the desired installation space. We can see intrusion by the five gauss line on the right hand wall and possibly on the ceiling. So we know that we definitely need shielding on some parts of the room. Here we'll list the things that we know about the magnet or the field in order to develop a model for the magnet to using our shielding calculations. We know that the stray field map has only magnitudes, not directions. We know that on the magnet axis, the field is axial. We know that on the center plane, the field is also axial. The magnets are designed to be symmetric in nature, so we know that the stray field map is symmetric. Finally, the major assumption we can make helps greatly. We know that manufacturers typically use only a few different coil arrangements. Here we see two different magnet configurations used by manufacturers. These are just a sample, they're not actual designs. The stray field patterns are very different. We can see that the magnet on the right gives a sh similar shape of field to our stray field map with the very pronounced dip on the center line. So we use this configuration as our template for X size. We know from the measured stray field map where the five gauss line intercepts axes, so we can set up different objectives based on those axial values. For this example, we have three variables designed. The scaling factors applied to the current density, the radial dimension, and the axial dimension. Customers have used many more variables in real examples with coil cross sections and individual dimensions being varied. We have two objectives, uh, which are to minimize the difference between the calculated stray field at the crossing points and the desired value of 5 Gauss. But we set constraints to make sure that the field is at least 5 Gauss because for a factor of safety, we want to ensure that we've not underprotected the field from the coiled set. From this, the optimizer will produce a set of designs that meet the constraints. Here we see what the optimizer has done to the original coil set and how it's affected the stray field map. The coils have mainly been scaled in the axial direction, and you can see now the very pronounced dip in the field on the center line as seen in our measured stray field map. Coil design 132 is now suitable to go on and use in our shield calculations.
So in summary, we've seen today why Opera is the tool of choice for magnetic shielding simulation by MRI designers. It has specific capabilities for this type of problem, allowing MRI shielding companies to design for legislation, cost and magnet performance. Thank you for joining us for this quick overview. Please don't hesitate to contact us for more information or check the Dassault system or Opera websites for further details. Thank you.